The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The name says it all, right? In 1974, Toby Hooper introduced us to Leatherface, and since then, he has been sawing through flesh and bone through a total of eight films spanning 43 years. In addition to the original 1974 film, we've had a couple sequels, we've had a couple prequels, we've had reimaginings, and we've had a remake. I can obviously only speak for myself, but I hope that there is never an end to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films. This is my ranking of all eight movies in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. Coming in at number eight is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. This is the easiest movie in this entire franchise for me to rank, quite frankly. I'll tell you right now that I absolutely hated this movie. This is thankfully the only movie in this franchise that I hated, which is the reason that it was so easy for me to rank this. I didn't find any of the characters in this movie likable at all. I know I'm gonna get hit by sh lightning for saying this. I didn't like Chop Top. I didn't like Chop Top. I didn't like Jim Sado's character, um, Drayton in this movie at all. I liked him in the first movie, he was okay. I did not like him in this movie at all. I absolutely hated Leatherface in this movie. I didn't like the way that he looked. I didn't like the way that he acted. I didn't like that they made him seem like a complete blithering imbecile in this movie. There was absolutely, the only thing in this movie that I actually thought was even okay were the sets in the movie. I mentioned that in my individual ranking, but a set alone cannot carry a movie. Texas Chainsaw Massacre number two is dead last for me. I hated this movie. Coming in at number seven is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Are you having fun yet? <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. If looks could kill. He wouldn't need a chainsaw. This movie had two huge future stars in it, in Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey. In this movie, however, I thought that Renee Zellweger's character was very, very low-key and very easily forgettable, whereas Matthew McConaughey's character was way over the top, very memorable. When I think of this movie as a whole, he's what I think about. Um, I don't really think of even Leatherface in this movie. This movie doesn't feel like a Leatherface movie to me. This feels like a Matthew McConaughey movie to me. I didn't like Leatherface's uh, his mask in this movie. I thought the character himself was all right. He was passable in this movie. But he went from a terrible mask throughout most of the movie to a drag queen, which really didn't do much for me at all. So that's why this movie falls in at number seven. I thought the, that the movie was fun. I certainly didn't hate it like I did the uh, the number eighth ranked movie in this uh, franchise, but it definitely, for me, was not as good as the next six films. Coming in at number six is Leatherface. This movie is actually a very well made Leatherface origin story. You follow Leatherface in this movie from being a very young, innocent boy who did not have it in him to kill someone, all the way up to where his face gets a bit torn up and we first see him put on a mask. Uh, this movie for me was a very pleasant surprise. I actually really enjoyed this movie. Most of this movie did not feel like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie to me. The very beginning a little bit, definitely at the end, but the entirety of the middle of this movie did not feel like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie to me. I thoroughly enjoyed it, nonetheless, but same, you know, at the same time, this didn't feel like all of the other movies in this franchise. Lily Taylor is the mother in this movie, and I thought that she was the outstanding star in this movie. She, I, I like her a lot, I've seen her in many other things, and so have you. I thought she was fantastic. The, uh, there's a bit of a curve thrown at you in this movie. They show, uh, like I was saying earlier, they show Leatherface as a little boy and then growing up and becoming ultimately Leatherface. There are two main boy characters in this movie um, and it kind of, they try and trick you, the, the least they tricked me, maybe it's only me, but 
I get the impression that they tried to trick you to think one character was Leatherface when he actually wasn't. It was the other one. If you haven't seen this movie, I, I strongly suggest that you watch this. For me, I thought that this was a very, very good, pleasant surprise in the franchise. Go check this one out. Coming in at number five is Texas Chainsaw 3D. This movie is primarily the introduction of a new member to the Sawyer family, Heather, portrayed by Alexandra Daddario, and she was fantastic in this movie. And she's also not hard to look at. Alexandra Daddario's portrayal of Heather in this movie was very cool. You see the whole gamut of emotions uh, from her throughout this movie. I, I thought she was wonderful. Um, the portrayal of Leatherface in this movie was by Dan Yeager, and I thought he was fantastic. You see him actually put almost a human spin on Leatherface, where he actually, he, you see him angry and you see him kind of get tired at one point, tired and angry and vengeful. And when he discovers that uh, Heather is his relative, he sees like a birthmark on her. He, you know, rescues her. I thought that he was just fantastic as Leatherface. Wasn't crazy about the mask, uh, but there is actually a scene in this movie where you see him sewing the mask onto his, directly onto his face, with kind of symbolic as the mask is part of him. I just thought this movie was fantastic. I actually, um, I like this movie more. The more I watch it, the more I like it. Initially, I wasn't crazy about it, but I thought this was a pretty cool installment in the franchise. Another real quick thing that I liked about this was not only did we meet Heather as being a new member of the Sawyer family, it was sort of like a callback to the other, uh, the older movies. And we had a family reunion of sorts. We had Marilyn Burns, Bill Mosley, Gunnar Hansen, and John Dugan all reappearing in this movie in different roles. I just thought that was pretty cool. Well, John Dugan is actually grandpa on this one as well. Pretty awesome. Coming in at number four is Leatherface, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. In this movie, we have R.A. R. A. Mihailov portraying Leatherface, and he was he's a big, scary dude, he, so he was pretty well cast in this movie. And this Leatherface is a far cry from the Leatherface that we got in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. This movie as a whole is a big difference than what we got in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. This goes back to being more like the original film, with a scary Leatherface like the original film, and it's actually a horror movie like the original film. For me, the second one was not a horror movie. This one comes back to what the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is supposed to be. In this movie, we uh, was the introduction to Viggo Mortensen to a lot of people. I know he was to me. We also have Ken Foray in this movie, who, in my opinion, was the star of this movie. It wasn't the final girl in the movie. Ken Foray, as Benny, was definitely the star character in this movie for me. Uh, overall, the movie, I thought it, it's a good movie. I think it's pretty solid. But I must admit that due to the nostalgia factor for me. If it wasn't so nostalgic for me for when this movie came out and how many times I saw it when it came out and what it meant to me when I saw it, the nostalgia factor, I think, has this movie higher on my list than it may be on yours. Coming in at number three is the 2003 Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. In this film, we have Andrew Bernarski uh, portraying Leatherface. And you talk about a big, scary dude. Andrew Bernarski was absolutely perfect as Leatherface in this movie. I really enjoyed the modern day spin on this 1974 tale. Um, I, I just, I really liked everything about this movie, to be honest with you. Arlie Ermey is in this movie as the father and as the cop, well, the fake cop. Um, and Arlie Ermey is Arlie Ermey. In every movie he's ever in, he seems like the same guy with just a different name. And that guy was just a gift to us as movie lovers. He has since passed away. You know, rest in peace, Arlie Ermey. Uh, the Jessica Biel final girl in this movie was also fantastic. She has never, she's made me never look at wife beater t-shirts the same again. 
Uh, I just, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I like the modern day spin on the original movie. And if you haven't seen this movie, I strongly suggest it. It's one of the better remakes out there. Coming in at number two is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. If you enjoyed the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake in 2003, this movie is the direct prequel to that movie. It explains a lot of stuff that is in the remake. It explains how the father got the police car and the police uniform. It explains how grandpa had his legs cut off. It, it, there, there's a whole lot of stuff. It explains how Leatherface got his mask. It, there's just a ton of stuff in this movie, which it, it strongly and very well supports everything that is in the uh, 2003 remake. This movie has a lot of gore and practical effects in it. Andrew Bernarski returns to reprise his role as Leatherface in this movie. This, for me, was actually better than the remake was. I loved everything about this movie. It had great practical effects. It had great backstory to it. It had a fantastic Leatherface in it, and it was bloody as hell. There is nothing to not like about this movie. Coming in at number one is the original 1974, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In 1974, Toby Hooper gave us not only one of the most important horror movies of all time, but he gave us one of the most important movies of all time, period. This movie was made for next to no money in absolutely horrible conditions. It was boiling hot when they were making this movie. And you could tell that this movie was made not for a paycheck, but it was made for the product. This movie was made out of love for what they were actually doing. This movie was banned all over the world, but what it actually did was it gave other people hope. You know, other people that came after this movie, horror writers, horror directors, movie makers in general, not just in the horror genre, said, look what that guy did. If he can do that, I can too. And when the success of the movie was happening, it gave production companies the option to, you know, to maybe branch out a little more and say, well, you know, they got away with it here, so maybe we can get away with it there. And that sort of thing started happening as a result of this movie. Have there been movies made with better uh, production quality since the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Of course there have. Most of the movies in the franchise after this have better production quality than the original had. Have there been better movies as a whole made since the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? That's very debatable. I know that I have a few that I like more than this one, but they may or may not be considered to be as important as this one. This movie just, as a horror movie fan, I know what this movie meant and I know what this movie means to me. So it cannot be understated how important this movie was to the history of the genre that we all love. This movie also was scary, whereas some of the other ones were not. This was also a Leatherface movie. When you think back to this movie, you think of Sally and Leatherface and her running from Leatherface. This is a Leatherface movie. A lot of the movies that came after this, most of the movies that came after not this, if not all of the movies that came after this, had different aspects to it. They were not Leatherface movie. This was a Leatherface movie and I loved it. In this day and age, when we think of slasher movie icons, we think of Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, and Michael Myers. All three of those characters probably would not exist if it wasn't for that 1974 Toby Hooper film. Those three characters are all here because they rode in on the coattails of Leatherface. As if you couldn't tell, I'm a Michael Myers fan. Halloween is my favorite franchise. And it's very common that people think that the 1978 Halloween film is the beginning of the slasher movie thing. I ain't no fool. I know that if it wasn't for the 1974 OG of slasher movies, I wouldn't have Michael Myers. None of us would have Freddy Krueger. There would be no Jason Voorhees. If it wasn't for that 1974 film, the horror movie landscape would be significantly different. So the 1974 original Texas Chainsaw Massacre film is easily my favorite in the franchise and it's not even close. Have you seen all of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films? What are your rankings? Leave me some comments down below and let's talk about it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're still here, that must mean you like what you see. Do me a huge personal favor. Click that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Take care of yourself. 
Take care of each 